All right. Hey, how we doing, everybody? It is, you know, Eli from Zoocast here, Adrian Grody. You know, that's my IG name. Go ahead and check it out. If you uh, like comic books and you like music and you like edgy memes, I am on there always just posting all kinds of nonsense. And I am one third of Zoocast here. We got a bunch of Zoocast stuff coming this week, including this video right here, which is Shabam. We made it, guys. It is the season finale of Book of Boba Fett. Bet, man, what a ride, man. Lots of mixed emotions here. I think this one paid off in a pretty good way. I think all the little breadcrumbs that were laid throughout the uh, earlier parts of the season, you know, they I feel like they came together in a pretty decent, pretty, pretty satisfying way today. For me personally, I thought it was it was okay. It was it was pretty not okay, it was more than okay. It was fun. It was awesome. It was like a, a pretty fun, good episode, you know. Uh, especially considering, you know, this this uh, you know, some of the flaws of this season that have been going on so far. Um, I think that this episode did a decent job of bringing that tension and that conflict to a climax so uh yeah go ahead and uh drop a like comment subscribe let me know what you thought of this episode man i'm coming here fresh again you know no uh i didn't watch any other reviews or anything like that so i'm just gonna get my impressions and my thoughts and uh, i'm gonna break down the whole episode what i thought and the most uh, kind of notable moments for me so um yeah like i said after you know these two episodes that felt like a real just detour off of the path a lot of people were saying is this uh episode gonna even you know feature boba fett is he gonna get to show off is it gonna wrap everything up pretty nicely or is it gonna really be a bit of a hot mess you know trying to jam too much in there and i thankfully uh the focus did return to boba fett and tasuin and uh, mas espa and the conflict with the pikes there that is the primary focus of this episode. And, uh, you know, last we, we checked, you know, we were ready for war. We were gearing for war. We had Cad Bane introduced and the people of uh, Freetown, you know, after the showdown with Cobb Vanth. Uh, you know, we were left wondering, you know, a couple questions is, you know, are they going to join the fight? Is Cobb Vanth going to survive? And uh, we were also left wondering at the end of last episode, is Grogu going to pick the lightsaber or the Mandalorian uh, chainmail shirt that that Din Djarin made for him. So, um, you know, th lots of good questions coming into this, you know. I think it, the, the hype was was pro quite proper for a uh, season finale of a Star Wars show. And uh, let's uh, let's get right into it here. So um, I, I like the way this episode... Oh, shaboop. Oh, look at that. Boom. Uh, yeah, so this episode just picks up right where the last one left off, essentially. Uh, when we last saw Tatooine and the Pikes in this conflict, they had just blown up the entire casino, which, uh, again, I'm very grateful that upon rewatching it, Max Rebo was not in the casino. I think a lot of people are uh, very happy to look back through that footage and see Max Rebo was not present in this explosion, okay? We cannot confirm his whereabouts, but we confirm he was not in this explosion, okay? I don't see little blue chunks anywhere, so I'm going to assume that Max Rebo is still alive. I don't think they'd do him dirty like that. But just, uh, yeah, seeing the aftermath of this, you know, that was a real shocking moment from last episode, and opening right off the bat with them reacting to it, you know, was a, was a really good you know, wait, just to jump right in. Sometimes I feel like these Star Wars shows like take their time getting into certain things. And other times I feel like they just jump right in, like at the start of the next episode. And I like when they do that personally, because we don't have too much time to, you know, kind of waste on a lot of like segue scenes. You know, I like just the, the kind of quick transition, moving the plot forward. Um, but yeah, you know, they, they, they know war's coming and they're kind of preparing and they're getting, uh, you know, this, uh, they're trying to figure out what they're about to do because they know it's about to be a full blown, uh, assault coming from the pikes, especially after doing a big old terrorist attack like this. Uh, it, uh, yeah, they, you know, so they have this moment where they're coordinating, they're talking in there and reacting to, to this. And I think, and they decide to take up, um, you know, shelter in this blown up casino right here, which I think is a really cool kind of, uh almost metaphor or kind of symbolic, you know, for them, like, uh, it kind of shows where they're at mentally, you know, cause they are invested in this town. They are invested in trying to be the daimyos, which are, you know, more of like the, uh, like a shogun, you know, more like a, uh, like not sheriff, but they're like a, a warlord, you know, general protectorate of the area, which I, at first, you know, I do think that especially cause this show was marketed as a crime show. If they really leaned into more like the samurai Western angle, I think uh, in the marketing, I think they could have it could have been received a little better because I I like this idea that you know Boba Fett is going to become like the uh you know like a like a warlord but like a you know a more noble warlord like a samurai shogunite I don't have a problem with that I actually really think that's pretty cool and especially the way that you know all the people he has rallied together kind of come together in this one and they actually do play their parts in the different you know layout of the battle uh, I I think that 
you know, some of the ideas that were presented in this season can really be expanded upon in a season two, if they do a season two, which I think they're going to do a season two with the way this leaves off. It's uh, pretty closed, but it's still pretty open. Um, so, yeah, so we got this explosion here and they, you know, they're just strategizing. And um, we also get in this intro too. we get, you know, Cad Bane and he's uh, going back to the Pikes to tell him what's going on about Cobb Banth. And we get more of the mayor here. And again, I've said I think I wish the mayor had more interactions with Boba in those first episodes. I think those two could have had a really interesting dynamic and the design of uh, uh, I think it's Clothunian, I think is the name of this alien. I love these guys. These are my favorite Star Wars aliens. I feel like they're the most just out there looking and I feel like there needs to be more characters like that and I liked him too because again I wish that we saw more of him with him and Boba pushing you know bumping heads against each other in a political way um I think that would have been really cool to see but it's really cool to see him too he's behind the scenes he's really conspiring with you know the criminals and the uh you know bounty hunters and he's causing the assassinations and they reveal that it was the pikes that killed uh the uh, the ta the Tuscan Raiders that Boba Fett was was living with and was uh was you know coming out of the Sarlacc pit and, and adjusting to life with, so um yeah that that reveal uh you know we all knew that honestly but you know it, it it creates some dramatic irony for going forward because we as the audience know for sure it's confirmed but Boba still has no idea you know so I think they did some cool things with that too in terms of like you know presenting the dramatic irony uh I'll get I'll touch back on it later because it has a pretty good setup right here for that for some stuff that comes along later uh that involves Cat Bane and some of the stuff he says uh later on but yeah you know just really just laying all the this this first like quarter of the episode really just lays all the cards out on the table and it just like sets up kind of the strategy of what's going to be happening because I really did like that this episode they didn't go too much with like the big outside expanded Filoni verse story they just said we're going to make this battle like epic and I think they did a pretty cool job of making it feel like a Star Wars battle like distinctly not just like a skirmish or a scene or a fight. Like it actually does feel like it's a battle and there's different geography to it. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this, uh, I like this setup here, you know, revealing that he, he, he was in on it all along. And I think, I mean, everybody did, you know, we speculated that the mayor was going to be in on it and that Cad Bane was going to be involved and with the pikes. So yeah, yeah. Good intro. I liked the intro. And again, in the name of honor, uh, again, just real glorious, invoking that samurai kind of vibe, especially with, you know, the Mandalorian armor and, you know, that Din Djarin going to be around. Uh, you can tell that it's, uh, you know, even already you can tell, especially when he goes, you know, rule with respect, there's going to be a invocation of that kind of, you know, his new mentality and where he wants to be. And, um, you know, I, uh, I think they do touch on some cool ideas with his mind, his current mind state. So, uh, yeah, we jump right back after that. We see an X wing pulling up to Tatooine. And, uh, you know, they real, they're real suspenseful with it, and they don't show who's flying it. You don't know if it's going to be Luke, if we're going to get a bunch of Luke in this episode. And uh, we don't. We don't get any Luke in this episode. And I'm actually, I'm very okay with that because there was just a lot going on already. And uh, we get this little guy, and everybody knows this little guy uh, steals the show every time. And just him and the story is a lot already. So uh, in, in a good way, though. He's 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 adorable, he's wholesome, he's, and he actually gets some good moments in this uh episode two but this is how he gets kind of put back into the story into this conflict here uh how the luke and grogu stuff ties back all around because din's over here and now you know uh he came to tatooine that's funny there's this whole scene with um peli Mato where she sees an x-wing coming into her her base and she's like oh no oh no okay and she's like everybody be cool everybody be cool she's talking to the gonk droids and everything and she's like hey my bad i was getting my registrations filled out right as you were pulling in and i just love again the idea that these uh that the rebel and the new republic they're the cops like it's like oh shit it's the cops like everybody be cool like i just i love that kind of reaction to it uh but then yeah it's revealed it was grogu and r2 flew him out here to uh you know, get him away from, I mean, to, not to get him away, but he made his choice and, you know, he chose to come with the Mandalorian and, and leave Luke. And, uh, I am, you know, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not surprised that it happened, but it, uh, they really left us guessing last week, you know, and it's, uh, really is a bit wild that he did actively choose to be with the Mandalorian instead of become a Jedi. And, uh, that's kind of crazy. You know, I'm, I'm sure we're not, that's not going to be the end of Grogu's force training for by a long shot, but 
yeah, for now, you know, this is definitely the setup of how we're going to get grow the, you know, get the duo back together for season three of Mandalorian and, uh, you know, keep the, that dynamic going because that's the, that's the bread and butter. You got the, the, you know, the stoic badass and a little, uh, wholesome bean, but, um, yeah. So we get these, you know, we get this whole scene basically reintroducing Grogu into this whole, uh, you know, uh, dynamic on Tatooine with Pelimato as the person trying to reunite him with Din Djarin because she's like, hey, I know that he was missing you and I knew he was looking for you. And so I'm going to try and get you out to him. So there's that. That was uh, that was cool. Um, oh, yeah. And this is what I was talking about where uh, there, I was saying there's a cool sense of geography in terms of Mos Espa and the different players that have been introduced to Boba's crew throughout the season. I feel like maybe this season could have had a little bit of a better reception if it was released all at once, maybe. I know that, you know, the week to week hype train has been really awesome and, you know, all the, you know, the Star Wars community has been having a blast with it, you know, regardless of whether they, you know, like it or not, you know, there's been a lot of discord and a lot of conversation. I think that some of those slower episodes would have been really received if it kind of built up all the way to this and we were able to kind of just breeze through it in one go. Uh, but that being said, this does retroactively make some of those episodes better to me for sure. You know, the idea that the, the scooter kids are patrolling around Moss Espa to me, that's a, you know, that makes sense that they're actually useful for that. Um, and they're, it's not just like a, like a gimmick, although, you know, they still do feel a little more Coruscant than Tatooine, but you know, that's, it's fine. And, um, yeah, the Gamorreans. So basically they have each of the respective, you know, parts of the crew, the scooter kids, uh, Black Chrysanthemum, these Gamorians, which I love the practical effects on them, by the way. They look great. Uh, these foals, I love how they like still look, you know, they, they got a little fucking bonson, on, but they're still looking ripped and stuff, and the snouts are really good. Um, I like the practical effects on them a lot. But they get put out in the different districts, which are the where the different families from the, you know, the family dinner scene, uh, where he's talking all, you know, trying to get them all on the same page against the Pikes. Uh, you know, they're all watching each of these respective areas, trying to keep, you know, a secure patrol over it and make sure no attacks happen. And uh, it, uh, like I said, it gives a cool sense of geography to me and uh, kind of does tie in well with like the, it's like, okay, there's this part of the town, this part of the town, you know, there's like the lizard people ones, there's the, you know, the Trandoshans, Trandoshans are lizard people, my bad. But yeah, so I liked the way they laid it out. They did a good job of really put, like I said, putting all the cards on the table, all the pieces on the board before uh, the shit really hits the fan, which it does pretty quickly, honestly. Right after this, we get uh, Cad Bane just walking right up to the blown up casino, and they have this real tense. It's you know, it's clearly a, a setup for you know when they have their actual duel later, but this initial confrontation between them is so. It, I really liked it. And to me, I actually feel like this did have a lot of old Boba Fett energy to it, where he he does seem very, especially because you can tell just through the suit acting. And I think Tamara Morrison, I wish he could have gotten to do a little bit more of the physical acting through the suit, because there is a lot of body language that like can't be like with a helmet on. You can't do the same level of like intimidation. You know, it's like it's w with the helmet off. I mean, but Basically, yeah, that physical acting and the body language, there was a lot of that there, and I really enjoyed it uh, because you see this tension. Like, he's really eager just to engage in violence because this is his old enemy, you know, this is his, his arch enemy, honestly, and he he's, he's you know, you can feel, even though he has the helmet on, you can feel like, oh, he's like, oh, hell no. And there's this part where he keeps on saying, he's like, let's let's do it then, Bubba. Let's let's run it right now. And he's he's in the comms, and, and uh, Fennec Sean's saying, don't do it. Don't do it. And he's like, I can, I can take him. I can take him. He literally says, I can take him over and over. And to me, that really did feel like an old school Bubba moment or something. You know, he's just really saying, he's like, I, I could do it. I got this guy. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I can, I can ice him. I don't, I could do it right now. But she's like, no, don't, you know, we're not going to do this on their term. You decide when this, you're the warlord, you're the daimyo and you're in charge here. So you can't look, you know, weak to them or you can't let them just intimidate you into you know acting the way that they want you to act and i thought that was a cool a cool moment that kind of reflects the whole arc of what we've been trying to you know i feel like they've been going for which again you know it hasn't always fell you know not i don't want to say it fall flat because i know what they're i can tell what they're going for you know with him changing and developing but um i do think this does um is a moment that kind of reflects what they've been trying to get at you know in a way 
So uh, yeah, they have this cool little moment. And there's like a and there's more to this scene too. He's all like, "Oh, I got back shooters too." So he's got all these pikes, you know, lined up against the walls. And uh, yeah, it's just a really cool, tense uh, showdown. And it does it doesn't you know it doesn't hit the fan yet. Uh, it's still waiting to build up. And uh, yeah, the, I mean, then things hit the fan. And you know, right after this duel, right after he leaves, uh, you, you know, you get all these comms on the inter on the you know calls on the intercom saying, "Oh man, things are going crazy left and right." And it turns out all the families had sold out Boba Fett and his crew to the Pikes, and they're all in legion with the Pikes now. And so they start attacking the biker gang, and all the lizard people just rush out of nowhere and start ganging up on Black Chrysanthemum. And I, it was, it was, it was chaotic and it was a lot of calamity going on. And again, you get that feeling where it's like this, there are different conflicts happening in different parts of the area. And like, you can't really, you know, everybody's kind of isolated from each other and it's, it, it kind of sucks, but it also kind of not sucks, but, um, it, yeah, I mean, it gives you that sense, like, you know, they're trying to strategize and control this big area and they can only do so much and, uh, and they get totally screwed frankly you know by by the people who said they were going to stay neutral they're they're saying nah we'd rather just get rid of you boba fett and your crew but um yeah i liked it you know it was a you know i think the concept art was a little bit better than how the scenes play out let me see i don't really have that many uh i use more some of the concept art to frame out this this video right here but yeah it's a the biker gangs they start getting shit shot at and lit up and uh i think a couple of them died honestly a couple of the no-named one but like i thought hey man you know i like that this conflict actually had you know people getting shot and blown up and uh you know it didn't really pull it's it's uh you know it wasn't super duper watered down like and i think um you know it like it could have been although black chrysanthemum didn't get the most cool scenes he did do a like a lot he definitely killed a lot of the lizard people uh he had this you know he had those electric knuckle dusters and he's just like punching fools in the face and uh you know but they were really ganging up on him like this and uh he could they i feel like they could have executed a little bit better especially with how crazy he is in the comics and stuff but he i i still like that he was there they show how tough wookies are in general i feel like maybe there's a this itch i have this weird feeling that they don't know what to do with wookies almost with like a wookie character which i know sounds like kind of weird but i've sort of felt that way for a while like obviously the sequels didn't know what the fuck to do with chewbacca either so um which kind of sucks because, I mean, you really could just use this moment to let him just cut loose. And he did a little bit, but I wanted to see him just go full berserker mode, especially like, you know, if not now, when, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then RIP the Gamorreans. They were all by themselves, man, and they got they got rocked. They got thrown right off the cliff, man. It was it was a sad day. They they were real ones. They were they were there from day one. They RIP RIP the pig man. Yep. So yeah. So that's, I like that those actual stakes. You know, we the, I like those guys, and the, and they got rocked, and I was I was bummed to see it. But you know, hey, that that's Star Wars for you. Um. Yeah. So you know, again, they're you know all this swarm and stuff, and 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 Boba and Din Djarin are are sticking together, and they actually like I kind of like the way they did this. Uh, they wrote Fennec out of the main conflict right now to give Boba and Din more time to shine in the main fight that that was about to be going on. Especially because I feel like they wrote Fennec should be really kind of OP. But he said, he said, where is the the leaders at? He Boba intimidates it out of this guy again, which uh, I, I hate this guy. You're obviously supposed to hate this guy. But I like that him and Boba interacted a lot this episode. I was waiting for that. I even said that in my last video. Um, I was, I was waiting for them to interact and for Boba to pump, punk him out into doing his job, you know, because he, he could be useful. He even says like, I can grovel on my knees and beg for forgiveness so that you don't have to, you can keep your spine intact and you don't have to, you can keep your dignity intact. And, uh, it just shows, yeah, he's a little weasel, you know, he's a little scheming, you know, uh, bureaucrat. And, uh, there's this funny scene where, you know, him and, him and Bo Boba and, uh, Din Djarin are actually having a conversation. He's like, oh, if you want to leave, I know this, this situation's bad. But Din saying like, no, this is, you know, for honor, like, you know, I owe you and uh, you've helped me before and you're Mandalorian. So I, I need to stick with you. And given the stuff that happened in the last couple episodes, how he was, uh, you know, denied his rank as Mandalorian and stuff. He's really those episodes, even though they didn't have Boba in them, they motivate Din Djarin's actions in this crossover right here. And I think that was actually pretty cool. And again, I think if the whole season came out at once and people got to see, you know, if they binge those first Boba episodes, then saw the Mando, ep the two Mando episodes, and then came to this one, I think it'd be all well, like, better received, you know, because it didn't feel like, oh, this is a whole week without Boba, like, 
But um, again, I'm, you, we get to see them interact a lot in this episode, and that's good because they do have great chemistry. You know, it's player one and player two basically is what it feels like. It felt like a video game almost. But uh, yeah, they can see they're outnumbered. So Bubba gives him a, a tablet and he writes down a bunch of stuff and he's like, yeah, go. Yeah, you're right. And for a moment, I was almost like, is he really going to surrender? I was like, I know he's not, but is he like going to try to negotiate something? And I'm glad he didn't. He just sent him out there to go buy some time. And he, the dude didn't even read what Boba wrote on the tablet before going out there and just saying, it's something hella foul, too. He's like, I'll fertilize the, sat- the sands of Tatooine with the bodies of your, you know, of, of, of your dead. Like, and it's it's pretty metal. And I, I like that, though. Like, Boba Fett's, a cla- you know, he's pretty metal, honestly, as far as, you know, Star Wars characters go. Um, and, uh, yeah, they use that moment to buy some time. And finally the fans get what they've been wanting to see is freaking Boba uses jetpack and fly and blap on everybody. And these two, again, cause they're talking about, you know, just rushing out and, and instead of waiting for all the pikes to get in position and then, you know, have their siege begin, they're just going to run out at them guns blazing and, and just pop off. And they definitely did, man. Again, I, like I said, when the, the video game vibes are real in a good way, cause they're both just flying around these two Mandalorians who we both really, really like are just kicking ass and just, just letting it rip, just guns straight blazing, just pew, 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 pew everywhere. Uh, I, I, I was just geeking out, you know? And, and like I said, I'm glad they did, uh, they just made this episode action-packed, and I think it does deliver on the action. I think all the other, I mean, and like I said, if the whole season was one, you know, one all released at once i think this would have played a lot better because then it, yeah it's a slow burn and then the powder keg freaking ignites and you get this you know crazy shootout and you know they're using their flamethrowers and their and their their jetpacks and and the, the the armor you know you see them get shot in the armor i love how they did the armor too because we seen in the mandalorian and stuff beskar is you know damn near invincible it's like adamantium for star wars but um you know it's still very clear that it hurts you know it doesn't stop it from hurting and if you get shot it's still not fun you can get shot but you know it doesn't it's still not fun so there's cuz there's plenty of times where you know they both you know take plenty of hits and 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 you know you have to wonder like damn how they're going to wiggle out of this one you know sorry i had lunch before i made this video but yeah, yeah, man. Tag team duo right here. I think they should make a, a Mandalorian video game. I think that's probably going to be coming down the pipeline. Or at least, you know, obviously an RPG. You could make your, a character that's a Mandalorian and fly around and stuff. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, fucking jetpack action. Here we go. And it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm loving it. They did some, they did do some cool stuff too with like the angles and like, obviously I can only capture so much, you know, just taking pictures and, and screen grabs and stuff. But um, yeah, they did a really, really cool job with it to me. Um, oh yeah. So this is from the concept art too, from the end. And I just really liked this one. And I think they nailed it because they basically recreated it in that scene right there. You know, they re- shot for shot almost. And, um, and again, too, just seeing these two in frame in a shot together, just lighting, lighting them up. Like this is, is you know, it's a real kick-ass Rambo moment. And uh, Boba, he has those like knee rockets again. And like, I forget if he loses his rifle or drops it or something. But then he, yeah, he pulls out the pistol and he's using it like the knee rocket and the pistol at the same time. And uh, yeah, you know, it really was. It was like the, like, you know, on season two of The Mandalorian when they, when they did a crossover there. Uh, yeah, and there was, there was these cool moments, too, where they both got shot at the same time by this one guy, so they turn around, and they both shoot them at the same time, and uh, yeah, the, the chemistry is just there between these characters, and it, it just feels like, I don't know, feels like a, like a video game or something, you know, like a co-op game, and uh, I, I, was, I was loving it. I was dorking out, for sure, big time. Um, let's see here what happens next. Um, Oh yeah, so they the oh yeah, because they're about to get outnumbered, you know, because they 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 put in the work and then they 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 were fighting really hard, but obviously it's still just the two of them in their section because everybody else is fighting in their section, having a hard time. Uh, Fennec Shan actually saves all the biker kids too, which I thought was uh, was a nice touch. She saves them as she's she's leaving out of the of Moss Espa to go to Moss Eisley to confront the leader of the Pikes, uh, while all this is going on. And, uh, yeah, she, she really saves their asses. And, uh, I think that was a much needed little, it was a good moment to give her, you know, but it was like a, uh, like, how do I say it? Yeah. It was like a, it was like a nice little moment for her. Cause she has had a lot of like time to shine, 
but I liked the interplay between all the different groups that we've established here. Cause then too, all the cops Vance people come to help out because they, you know, their sheriff got shot and they said, we're not dealing with this bullshit. We're going to, you know, we're, we had to come help. He's like, you didn't have to, you know, uh, Din Jarn says you didn't have to, but the people are like, yes, we did. Yeah, we did. You don't, you don't do that. You don't come to our town and just, you know, murder our sheriff and stuff, which I was surprised. I didn't think that he was uh, going to, you know, die or they thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to come back right now you know like with the with the with the vengeance and uh because the way it looked it looked like he got shot in the short shoulder and i could have seen him being injured and maybe um maybe you know having some sort of you know i don't know but we'll, we'll see but uh yeah the, so the people of freetown come too and again all these things that got set up uh you know throughout the the past episodes are all you know doing a pretty pretty good job of like interweaving weaving together into this big battle against the the pikes there and uh, they all start to push back, you know, not all, they're all regrouped back together. You know, Chris Santon makes it, he has this cool scene too. I didn't put it on here, but he's just running out of the corner and he has all these enemies on him and he throws one. And as it's in the air, he shoots him at the, with a big old rock, you know, his rifle. And uh, he's like just limping through the battlefield and getting shot and just being like, ah, but like still like, you know, trying to make it back to the, to the barricade. And I thought that was a good moment too. Cause again, Wookiees are badass. Wookiees are really strong. And, uh, you know, he got some, he got some good moments in this. I, f again, I feel like they maybe he could have gone a little harder, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough balance. There was a lot going on. And, uh, I think that he did, you know, he did, he did, he had a cool, he had a couple cool moments, you know, and his presence was, was welcome for sure. So, uh, yeah. And then once they get back into, you know, they all regrouped bikers, the people, Freetown, Boba, Din Djarin, uh, you know, they regroup, but then they had, uh, these scorpion droids come out and I don't think I've ever seen these. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm really failing as a star Wars nerd here. Cause I'm not sure if these were from like expanded universe or if these were in clone wars, they look a lot like droidicas and um, you know, they got these energy shields here and, and you know, they, it really had like the same energy though, that like the droidicas had when you first saw them in the prequel trilogy, we were like, what the, f what is that? You know, what is that? What now? what you know and and uh it made droids uh honestly you know uh intimidating again because you know i feel like they were made to be such a joke in the prequels and in clone wars 2 god my hair is all crazy right now but clone wars 2 you know like people don't see the droids as as valid of a threat as like stormtroopers i don't think people really see either as a valid threat but these guys are, are heavy duty and and i like the you know there was the same sense of like with the dark troopers on mandalorian season two like Oh, like this is this is um this is something different, you know. This isn't something you've you know, they deal with on a regular basis. Uh but again, I like when they make the droids intimidating. You know, most normal people aren't gonna wanna have to fight battle droids, let alone these heavy duty, you know, rocket launcher tank crawler battle droids. These guys are crazy. The the scorpion droids is what they're called. But um yeah, and again, that's why I said like the video game vibes are real. You know, you fight through the wave of uh fight through the wave of, of dudes, you know, wave of, you know, you get your different areas together, regroup all together. And then, uh, you know, now you have a, a raid boss fight with these two droids coming through and, uh, yeah, man, they, they laid siege. It was, it was, a uh, you know, it was tense, you know, having to wonder how they're going to, how to beat them. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Cause they, you know, they, they, they shoot at them. They use their flamethrowers. Uh, Din Djarin tries to use the, the dark saber too, actually, and uh, nothing, you know, no, no luck at all for, for, for any of it. And, uh, you know, I really didn't know what the hell they were going to do, you know, to, to, to beat these guys. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, they start retreating, everybody kind of, you know, goes into a different direction they kind of draw the, uh, droids apart, you know, so at least there's not two of them in the same area, which again, I like the way they did the, like this, there's like a sense of strategy. It feels like a battle, you know, like a Star Wars battle. And there's like a cool little bit of like, you know, geography going on with it that I liked because uh, there's like an element too of like the street kids saying like, oh, I know the city. We can't go back that way. If we go back that way, we'll have no cover. There's nowhere for us to go. Uh, so we have to, you know, stay right here, fortify this, and then we'll alley-oop around and flank them and try to get its attention that way and get up on the roofs. And so... Yeah, I like the, you know, the element of strategy there, uh, the element of like different fronts, like different fronts of the battle almost. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> this it did get a little bit. Uh, how do I say this? Um, you know, um, Pelimato bringing Grogu over here 
like makes sense because I know she's probably just trying to, you know, come. She thinks it's probably just a normal job and this is just where he's posted up at. But I feel like she's smarter than that to just walk into like a big ass battlefield. And I feel like she would have heard that like, oh, they're going to blow up freaking Moss Espa. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like she's a little bit more in the know than how they play her off to be in this scene because she's just like got, you know, all her droids and got Grogu. And she's like, hey, how you doing? And it's like, no, I feel like she's a little bit smarter than that. But, you know, it is a fun little, you know, Star Wars chase scene. They're running from the uh, they're from running from the scorpion droid. <laughs> He's just like, there's, and again, I think even Mando plays it well. He's like, what the hell? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Go, go, go. Get out of here. Go. And even when he sees little baby Grogu, he's like, oh, my. He's like, hi, but we need, you shouldn't be here. Let's, let's go. Let's get out of here. And, uh, you know, it, you almost didn't even have time to, like, savor the moment because, which is, I think, again, clever, too, because they didn't have time to savor the moment. They're freaking running for their lives on this little uh, robot guy, which, oh, my God, I swear to God, I rewatched this, like, three times. I thought she said, fuck. She said, like, because she says, bucket of bolts, but I thought she says, ah, because she says, ah, bucket of bolts, and the, but the way she says, bucket like it just there's nothing else after for a second she's like ah fuck it is what it sounds like and i was about to be like really gonna drop an f-bomb in star wars bro but i don't you know when your head just plays tricks on you but uh yeah yeah i thought this scene was a little bit wacky a little bit tonally different from like the other you know because it felt really perilous and real tense you know like a real actual kind of battle to me for a bit but um uh, so this felt a little bit goofy, but it's fine, you know, because it's obviously it's, you know, more comedic relief, more lighthearted characters. You know, that's Star Wars for you. You got to you got to milk the cow. You got to you know cover your bases there. But um, <clears throat> yeah, this was cool. I like this shot of, uh, you know, when it did blow up and uh, they're flying through the air and Grogu catches her, you know, uh, or Din Djarin catches Grogu midair. Uh, I like, I like the way that that was. And then all the gonk droids, they dropped into their little uh, their little form here. And then we have this shot right there while they're still like. You know, God damn it! What are we gonna do? And and again, I like I like that that feeling in a show where it's like, oh man, like we're still like we're trying very hard and we're not getting much done. Like, what are we gonna? How are we gonna get past this obstacle? And um, you know, that's when there's a, a another callback comes full circle. Here is freaking Boba just comes in, and the way they did it was so cool because you see like the claws like reaching over the buildings and just like slowly like like creeping up like it's Godzilla they had lots of kaiju energy lots of uh um yeah like you know yeah Godzilla influence on this with the rancor and I'm I'm always welcome to that I'm a big fan of kaiju fights and monsters and uh you know seeing more creatures especially in Star Wars too and uh this was this was great the rancor action like was I feel like everything I personally think that this is I've been wanting to see like like this is how I imagine a Rancor would be against, like, like fully weaponized, and to see Boba be the one to, you know, ride him and 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 steer him and stuff. It just, and again, it's it's one of those things they laid out in the beginning, and you know, I part of me is a little bit like, oh, we didn't get to see him train with it or work with it, but I'm like, I don't really care. It's fine. It's implied. What else was he doing? He was probably doing that in his spare time, you know? So I, it's, it's okay for me. You know, some people might probably feel like, oh, we didn't get to see him. And they said it wasn't easy to do, but it's like, he's Boba Fett, dude. He also, you know, rocked that big monster on the first episode, just, you know, by himself. So, uh, you know, the, the affinity for, you know, giant monsters being like, and I think it's it's really kind of a metaphor too, you know, like that's like the raging the raging beast, you know, and it's like, uh, you know, controlling the beast too. I think that's kind of again kind of this arc that they're sort of trying to do for Boba Fett, um, which and again I like that in this episode we get to see Boba, you know, unleash the beast too though, you know, he gets to actually pop off and he he really just lets this thing go berserk, man. Like with like they together, like him and the Rancor. Uh, yeah, he gets all these different, like, doing these different, like, advantage shots, you know, like, jumping from building to building. And the Rancor is fast. It's not even slow. It's, like, it moves pretty quick. And it's, like, you know, pushing the, throwing the droids around and throwing the pikes around. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, you get this badass scene, too, where um, they work together where the Bobo and the Rancor were were distracting one of the droids and, like, you know, just really laid it on thick with the with the shield. And so Din Djarin's able to actually push through the rear shield and hop in through the, the force field. 
and uh, he's able to get some really cool moments in too with the dark saber, which uh, I, I I liked. I love that he just has this in his arsenal right now, and it's it's not something he uses all the time, but the way like when he does use it, it's fucking epic. And this was definitely epic. This reminds me of in Empire Strikes Back when uh, Luke. You know, he zip lines up to the AT AT and he slashes it open and throws a grenade in and then drops down. Um, I feel like there's a lot of similar energy there. Or even too, like in Clone Wars, uh, the animated movie, which controversial, I know. But then the animated movie, there's the intro scene where Anakin's just hopping from, you know, on the tops of these giant droids and just chopping them in half as he's on top of them. And that's always just killer, bro. Just a little lightsaber on droid action. Uh, yeah, he cuts off its gun ray and then he, you know, stabs it right in the, the computer face. And, uh, even little Grogu has a moment too, cause it's going to step on, on him. You know, even though he did all this, he's still having a hard time, you know, bringing it down. And, uh, little Grogu has a moment where he pulls out like a, like a, like a, like a bolt of it. And then the leg collapses as it's about to, to stomp on did Jaren. And so, uh, you know, that's cool. He gets, he gets little cool action. He's, I, it, it's cool. He's getting action moments now though in like like tense scenes that he's actually helping out a little bit. That's pretty cool. I always said that I thought Din Djarin and Boba Fett would have been great on Battlefront 2. No, not Din Djarin. I mean, um, Din Djarin and Grogu would be cool as one character. Like, like he, like, you know, uh, Grogu could do a little more like passive effects or something or like, you know, like have like, you know, kind of cool down stuff. Whereas Din Djarin has like, you know, the blaster and the dark saber and stuff too. I uh, hope we get to play as Din Djarin at some point in a Star Wars game. That'd be pretty fucking sick. He's one of my favorites, like, you know, of, of the new canon, like, period. He's definitely one of the best of the new Star Wars, Disney Star Wars. But, uh, yeah, man, again, more Rancor just, just going off, man. I I love these shots. Like, this shot right here of it, just holding it up. Like, you get to see, again, you know, it's like what's implied. It's what's implied in Return of the Jedi when you see the Rancor. You're like, oh, man, this thing's all chained up down here. Like, what would it be like? If it was fighting stormtroopers, what would it be like if it was fighting a walker? What would it be like if it was, you know, um, you know, just on the loose, you know, and it's it, it's cool. We get to we get to see that, in a, in a sense, uh, right here, you know, and, and he, he takes him out, man. It's, it, and like I said, I'm a sucker for kaiju fights. I love Pacific Rim. I love Godzilla. So, um, yeah, this is this was doing it for me uh, for real. Uh, yeah, he even eats somebody. Yeah. Yeah. He eats someone, too. Uh, and again, that's I, I like that. You know, it's a fucking monster on the loose. And then, of course, we have the real final boss, though. The the mini boss, the raid is over. You know, with the two droids got destroyed. So now you got the final boss of the of the the onslaught here. Freaking Cad Bane. We all knew it was coming. Um, <clears throat> I feel like they did a decent job. The flamethrower to the face of the Rancor. You know, especially because Rancor, like the flamethrower, didn't do a lot against the droids because it was like shields and their their droids, but. Uh, again, the idea that the Rancor is like living and they even say, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's more like of an empathetic creature and stuff too. So, uh, something like these flamethrower would be affected, you know, and scaring it away. Cause a lot of big animals, you can actually scare away kind of easily too. And, um, uh, again, that makes the Rancor more complex too than it, than it, than it's ever been, to be honest. Uh, but I like that it, you know, he, he just, you know, doesn't back down from it and he, you know, just, you know, lets it have it in the face there. And uh, it it actually knocks Boba off its balance because he he's able to scare scare it you know scared enough to 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 make you know Boba fall off and you know that was a good enough reason for me to you know have him you know not be on the Rancor when he fights Cad Bane like but um <clears throat> the Rancor runs off and uh, this is it we get the showdown man like the straight cowboy western uh, man with no name freaking Clint Eastwood um, good the bad and the ugly. It's it's all right here, man. And I was it was good. They had like a real cool exchange where he's like, uh, you know, you're getting soft in your your old age. Oh, that was from earlier, but he says he's like, You're getting soft in your old age. And even here too, they they speak like, you know, they've known each other for forever because, you know, they have. And Bubba he said he even says at one point, he's like, he's like, I'm not a little boy anymore, and you're an old man, Cad. Like, we're not, you know, this isn't gonna be like last time, or you know, because they had their uh, there's their duel that was never made into the Clone Wars, but they, uh, you know, young Boba Fett had a duel with Cad Bane, and uh, it's part of the reason why he's got those metal chunks up in his head, and that's why Boba has the dent on his helmet. Um, <clears throat> but let me see here. But yeah, I mean, on the quick draw too, it's it's a lot of tension. You know, that's always the 
you know, that's always what's good in like a, in a duel, you know, you build it up with the shit talk and you build it up with the, uh, you know, just that, that, that burning like malice of like, oh yeah, they're ready. They're ready to get violent with each other. And, um, but on the quick draw, Cad Bane gets him, he gets him, knocks him down. Uh, he loses his gun, I think too. Yeah. Or, or um, yeah, Bubba loses his gun and it's like, even though Bubba has the armor, Cad's still quicker than him. And you know, he's like, uh, he lashes out. This part was cool to me because he lashes out. He's like, this is my town. And he just like, you know, he shoots the flamethrower at him. Cad rolls out of the way. And it's so like, it all happens so fast. And then boom, Cad lights him up like two more times. Like the speed on Cad is just undeniable. And it's, it, it's cool because it is a, a, a balance, you know, because Boba has armor, but Cad has, has the quickness. So, uh, I like, I like the, the, just the, the quick tense, like chop, 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 chop of the duel here and how it played out. And, um, yeah, he has him on the ground and stuff because he shoots him a couple times and uh, he, he takes off his helmet. It's this whole thing, like just trying to humiliate him. Although something I noticed, look at his fingers. Don't his fingers look a little weird? His fingers look like the gloves are too big for whatever actor or whatever. I, it just feels it feels like there's a, they're a little bit empty right there. And his gun's a little tiny, but I mean, it's it's a little pea shooter or whatever. But, you know, hey, his gun, his gun. But it's just a little random nitpick for me, but I was looking at that and I was like, why the fuck are his fingertips so long? Like you could tell the fingers end like right there. And then this is just like an extra attachment or something like, I know he's an alien, but, um, little other th- tidbit too. Um, I know this is in pretty much every appearance of him, but the, just the flamethrowers and the, the ballistics on the, the arms that they both have. I'll go back to this one here. Uh, he has these red ones and then he has these blue ones. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they have good contrast just in general. He's blue and then he's, you know, green and red and orange versus, you know, the, the blue, brown and, and, and red here. I don't know. They have good, like visual contrast from each other. He looks a little more high tech, a little more samurai. He looks way more cowboy Western. Um, I, I, I just really, I like both these characters a ton if you can't tell. So. Uh, yeah, the fucking, the duel goes off and I do like the way this played out because, um, you don't really think of Boba Fett as a physical hand to hand fighter, but that's definitely become an element, you know, between Mandalorian season two and this one. I like the gaffy stick as a, uh, you know, as an, as an extension in his ar- arsenal, uh, because it's, it's only fitting too, especially, you know, he died on the Sarlacc pit, your finger quotes died. That's like his iconic moment. So it makes sense that he would acquire one of those and, and be able to use it. And that's a, a cool melee weapon for him to be using to me. And he's able to get, you know, get the, get the ups on Cad Bane by using those hand to hand skills. He learned with the Tuscan Raiders and, uh, you know, he's able to sweep his feet out from under him and, 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 and whack him in the freaking, I think he hits him in the chest or something. And then he, uh, he stabs him in the chest when he's on the ground too. And he's able to, and he, he, he gets the win. He kills him. And I think that was just fitting. You know, I do actually think that was a good, uh, satisfying, action moment that like and again i said in star wars the the character moments are in the action it's in the action that's where the character moments come out and that's why i like the din jaren and boba fett stuff too because both of their characters are bouncing off each other because they're they're fighting very well together you know they're cooperating and they have each other's backs that shows that they both have like this code and this creed that's you know unspoken as they're fighting they're looking out for each other and right here this shows that it's like you know he's literally you know, killing like his old rival, he's killing that old, you know, that old, not flame, but you know, yeah, the old, the old, uh, the old blood. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. He's killing the old blood. You know, he takes his helmet off or he had his helmet off from when Cad Bane took it off. But, um, I thought it was fitting. I thought again, like, like I said, if, if it was all released at one season at once, I think it's going to, I think it's going to play a lot better, you know, than, um, some like, some of the reaction it got on the week by week. And I think when I rewatch this, which I'm going to rewatch this soon uh, from start to finish, I think I am going to like it more having this, uh, you know, the way this all played out. I do think there's a lot of wasted potential, but there's also rumors that this is only supposed to be like basically the initially like first half of the season almost. And they had other stuff planned, but they just got, they weren't able to do it. So they just made this arc, this, you know, this Mon Espa arc uh, and this Cad Bane in the Pikes, you know, the, the season, but um, <clears throat> I think they could take this. I think they. I think they're gonna do a season two, and I think they could take it even further with this idea that Boba has. You know, I don't know. Maybe he has to go. I would like to see him go off planet, but 
I think his story arc here is relatively complete. I think the lack of flashbacks maybe didn't get the contrast they wanted between, you know, that cold-blooded murderous killer, you know, because that's what Cad Bane's supposed to represent here is like the life Boba used to have, whereas all the rest of it is representing, you know, the life Boba's building now and how he's trying to be now. And I, I don't have a problem with that. You know, Star Wars, I feel like Star Wars, you do have to use your imagination yourself sometimes. And that's what makes it a good series, you know, is that you have to, you know, it stimulates your imagination. You're like, what's going on there? What's going on with that? Um, so <clears throat> could have been done a little better, you know, that contrast. But uh, I think that bringing Cad Bane in in these last couple episodes has definitely helped uh, the idea get across while giving like some good, good character moments, some, some fan service and, uh, I was stoked on the Boba action in this episode. But uh, not quite done yet, though. Even though Final Boss Cad Bane definitely, uh, you know, wiped out, wiped on the floor there, laid out, dare I say, pierced um, <laughs> with a gaffy stick. Uh, it was pretty cool, man. And, and Tamura Morrison's face, I wish I caught it, but he's just like, <sighs> like just like the, 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 the crazy eyes that this man's able to give. Um, it is a shame he didn't get to do them more because I loved the crazy eyes that Boba had in Mandalorian season two when he was just rocking those stormtroopers, just, just like Kurt, just yeah, just fucking. I don't even know, but yeah. So let's see here. Oh yeah, and this is the concept art version of it. Um, I do like with the helmet off. I feel like there's a little bit more uh, almost intimacy there. You get to see the facial expressions, and again, and again, I think I wish there was a little bit more back and forth between helmet on after you know physical acting and then the helmet off. Tamara Morrison, crazy eyes, you know, being able to like show that personal emotion versus just the body acting. But um, all the concept art is gorgeous, man. I feel like it's slightly 3D rendered or maybe it just looks that good. But I was rewatching it on like this really nice TV at the studio here. And I was like, I feel like these are kind of 3D rendered somewhat. But um, either way, um, yeah, they, they did a good job of, you know, nailing the vibe of the concept art. And I think this was actually better than the concept art, which is kind of saying something because that's a that's a great looking you know thing right there but um i like the way it played out and then last but not least man we got the rancor it's on the loose uh straight king kong it literally climbs up to the top of the tower in the middle of the town hall and does a king kong and hang, hangs off the side and uh you get din trying to you know do what he can to calm it down and Again, they play with that idea, too, of, like, the, you know, the armor is indestructible, but it's, like, it's not going to be fun if something happens. Like, the Rancor starts biting down on Din's head, and he has the helmet on, but he's still, like, oh, man, like, this is it's not a good situation to be in. And he, you know, uses the flamethrower and shoots it in the mouth. And um, this thing's, you know, on the loose. And, of course, it's a little wholesome bean who's able to calm down the, the angry doggo there that's rampaging through the park. Yeah, this was this was great. I think this, you know, this this is a perfect this, and these are the kind of moments that show that like Grogu's definitely like a light side character, you know, and this is definitely like with the force and almost like you know, the purity of the force too, because like, Grogu's a baby, so like to him it's like he just has he's able to empathize just purely through like seeing things and feeling things and feeling the force, you know. And he I feel like he even he knew he's all like, Oh, this thing just needs to chill out, you know, like we just we just thought everybody needs to chill out, first of all, you know, but this guy's he's he just helped us, you know. So Grogu goes you know, he's able to calm him down and he even like curls up they both fall asleep and it's like you know mega wholesome moment you get all the awes from the fans and the ooze and um it was good though i liked it i think it didn't feel out of place grogu a little bit did feel like slightly out not out of place but maybe if grogu wasn't in this story there could have they could have done a couple more maybe crazier things with the story. But that being said, this very much so is set up for Mandalorian season three of how to get, you know, this duo back together. And that being said, I don't think it's that bad, you know, of a way for them to have done it. But it's it's because I still got to see Din Djarin going off. I still got to see him helping Boba Fett and, and, and shooting a bunch of people. And um, I think this moment was actually pretty worthwhile too because we just learned we just you know grogu was just learning about nature and the force and balance and harmony and all this stuff and so uh this shows that he learned something you know he learned something about nature and about the nature of things i guess you know even though you know he can't talk we don't know what he's thinking but you you know that's non-verbal storytelling you know so or it's just visual storytelling there and i like that so let's see here what else here oh i didn't include it um, oh yeah, see, so again, we all saw this coming too when it was the, you know, he was building this and had the little pod in the background and he's like, oh, we don't know you don't like Astromex, but you know who you do like is little baby Yodas and we have a perfect Yoda-sized pod back there. Um, 
yeah, so this was the basically the last shot of the episode. Uh, and you get, and exactly, it's the cliffhanger for season three of The Mandalorian for where they're going to go from there. Uh, I forgot to include it, but Fennec Shan, she actually does reach the leader of the Pikes and the mayor and um, all the other crime head bosses that of the families that are in Mos Espa. And uh, they're hiding out in Mos Eisley, having secret meetings and stuff. And it was brutal, man. She just straight murders all of them, man. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at it or anything. I do kind of wish Boba got to do it. I think that would have been like a nice coda. And I think fans would have been happy to see him just, you know, go off and be real, real ruthless with it. But Fennec kills them all in pretty brutal ways. I think she like stabs one guy and shoots one guy. The mayor specifically, she like gets a fucking rope and like strings him up and he like he's like hanging from the ceiling and like choking and dying and he's like hanging as the last guy is like you know squirming around like the leader of the pikes is like squirming around and she ends up killing him too but i was like damn even for star wars i was like i know i just said you know why star wars to be brutal but i was like that was that was that was surprising i'm glad i mean I'm, i wasn't mad at it but uh it was it was a pretty crazy scene the way she just wiped them all out and then again you just see her creep away real stealthily and i was like yeah, she's the assassin. You know, that's her job is to go you know, be the assassin. So that, I, I kind of get some of the stuff that they've laid out throughout the season, you know, and I think it does come full circle because he's, you know, protecting, going off, protecting the city in the in the front, you know, while literally the assassin is is going and sneaking around and, and doing the dirty work, the sneaking and the, and, the, and the killing people behind people's back and stuff. So uh, I think that overall, some of the dust has settled from this series and it's kind of laid you know, things did fall into place with this finale. I know a lot of fans wanted them to do more with the crime element and they wanted Boba to be the crime leader and maybe take over like the spice trade. But personally, I I don't have a problem with the way that they made Boba against, you know, the spice uh, trade because, you know, it's causing problems. It's killing people, I'm, you know, especially with, you know, how things are with drugs in real life. I don't think that was a bad um way to make him go because even though you can still be like a ruthless person and be like oh no i don't mess with that kind of you know scum and villainy uh so <clears throat> yeah overall i mean the end they were just rebuilding um you know boba fett was walking through and everybody knew him and they respected him again now and um you know again like i said the potential for a season two is still open i think that if they did do a season two i would want that to be about exploring more outer elements of the the crime world like i think i would want it to be known that like yeah you can't mess with moss espa anymore maybe they get some more you know better in, enforcements you know and and, are, and become bigger and you know people aren't coming to them to mess with them so now boba has to go out to expand and make some other criminal deals i think that could be uh, a season two idea and then you could have some more of that connective tissue to the rest of what's going on with star wars and then you could have flat more more back to flashbacks too i think you could do that that way as well have them get in some serious fights and then do flashbacks to way before you could even do like a post uh revenge of the sith kind of flashback you know pre a new hope you could do in between a new hope and empire strikes back you know there's tons of stuff you could do you could even do i feel like him like in the sarlacc almost i know they did a little bit of that uh, just in the beginning and then mostly in the, that psychedelic trip he has. But <clears throat> uh, yeah, overall the season, I thought it was pretty good. I, you know, I think it, you know, now it's all out at once. I think that it is better than it was when it was, you know, I think it was going to be received better now that we at least get this climactic uh, set piece, you know, that's really, really good. I, I liked it. Like I said, I liked the strategic element, it, the geography, um, you know, it felt like a video game. It was fun. You know, there wasn't a lot of like, uh, fluff to me. I felt like there was just pretty, it was pretty packed with action. And I was worried. A lot of people were saying like, I hope that there was like, like a lot of people were saying there might've been like a Harrison Ford cameo or something. I'm glad there wasn't because it wouldn't make sense to me. I do think that there was a wasted potential in not having Bosk in this story or Dengar. I forgot his name last time, but he totally should have and could have hired Dengar. Uh, I think that people would have fucked with that if it was Dinjar and Black Kersantan and Dengar. I think that would have been like people would have been like yes let's go because that's another you know throwback that's a classic to the you know that iconic scene in uh, Empire Strikes Back and uh, you know he actually is an ally to Boba Fett in the comics and stuff too but I'm glad we didn't see like a Han Solo because it wouldn't have made sense um, you know something like a like Kira maybe would have made sense you know but um, they kept it pretty 
contained because they knew they had to wrap this up. And I'm glad they just did that instead of trying to do too much and set up too many other things. But that being said, the end stinger was freaking Thundercats character bringing Cobb Banth uh, or Cobb Banth in the back to tank, which they said it was kind of funny because uh, Fennec Sean said to Bubba, she's like, oh, you can use a back to. And he's like, oh, someone's using it right now. And they said to Chris and they're like, oh, you, yeah, we're, we, I owe you a back to when this is done. But it's it's Cobb Vanth who's in the back then. I was like, oh shit, he did survive. I hella knew he'd survive because he's really he he has a lot of charisma. But Thundercats here, so we're gonna make Cobb Vanth some kind of cyborg here. We're gonna get some cybernetic, uh, you know, um, enhancements here. And uh, yeah, that was the that was the end credit stinger. So we're gonna see a techno Cobb Vanth uh, coming coming soon, I guess. I do think too, if Thundercat was in more of the series, I know he again he was busy busy being Thundercat, but if he was a bigger part of the biker gang, I think he would have uh, the biker gang would have been received a little better too. But um, that being said, I'm I I'm happy with this season. I I think it was obvious there was some, you know some some messes behind the scenes. I definitely think that the whole thing did have a little bit of whiff of a uh, of Kathleen Kennedy. You know she loves doing like these uh character stories you know um that's where it's a you know very introspection and redemption and and whatnot and so you know finger quotes subversion or whatever um you know i definitely got those vibes but this ending pulled through for me in a lot of ways and i don't i didn't really need it to be bigger than this i think this was big enough we got a rancor we got um cob vanth we got you know we got to see boba and din Djarin, you know just going off we got to see Boba ride the rancor we got to see some heavy duty droid action uh you know baby grogu was there um i don't really think that there needed to be any much more especially with the way they set it up i i think considering you know i'm i'm a big proponent of you know taking things that things are what they are and i thought this was good i liked it overall uh, if I had to give it a number, I'd give the series, uh, you're going to call me safe, you're going to call me lame, a seven, seven out of ten, or six and a half, maybe, six and a half, seven, just because that beginning pace was so wonky, but now that I know it's going to happen, it's going to make all that a lot easier to breeze through. I did still love the moment, too, where Boba Fett was in his ship just gunning down all the, the biker gang. That was great. That was a real classic moment. I like the stuff with the Sarlacc pit where he was going back to try to look for the armor, and they dropped the... Uh, the 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 sonar in there or the bomb they dropped the the bomb in there i forgot what those are called i forget but um it had some moments you know his his psychedelic trip through through the dune sea was really cool too i like the idea of different cultures in star wars having different connections to the force whether they call it the force or not it's very obvious that that was like a force vision and he went out there to you know experience that what he needed to be shown by the universe and that was that was sick too uh, so I definitely think, yeah, that was one of my favorite moments. The, the, the slave one scene was, was great. The scene where they blow up the Sarlacc pit was nice. I liked that. Um, what other scene? I didn't like the train robbery. I know that uh, the train robbery was like one of the bigger early set pieces, but I just wasn't really digging that, I guess, you know, especially cause Boba was just mostly in like the, the white under, you know, long johns and I was like, bro, give him like something else. Like, I don't know. Give him like a little bit of something to wear. But um, yeah, so I like well, I'm trying to think of some of my other favorite moments from this. But uh yeah, I'm gonna just take it back to the front here. Let me see here. Let's let's stay right there. We'll stay on that one for uh for that. But um yeah, I mean I think um I am with you know some other fans saying that they could have gone a little heavier with the action, they could have gone a little heavier with the brutality, with the cal with like the coldness, you know, the cold blooded killer vibe. But, you know, that being said, it's real clear they want to build them up to be like this kind of anti hero vibe now, which again I'm okay with. I think that this new version of the character could have some interesting interactions with other characters such as like a Han Solo or a Luke Skywalker or a, uh, you know, if they do, if he does run into any of those guys, it could totally change the dynamic and it could be um, very interesting. And I think too, if they listen to fans, which they've been moderately good at listening to fans, they've been getting better about it. Um, but if we have, you know, more flashbacks to different missions with Boba Fett doing things, you know, cause even if this is what he's doing now, we could still, you know, look back to the, to the boat, the bounty hunting days and, um, yeah, you know, I think, I think moving forward, you know, this version of the character in other crossovers, other stories, uh, you know, he, he, he could be used good. And, um, yeah, 
Well, all right, yeah, so I think that's gonna just about do it here. Um, just gonna do a quick little look here real quick there. Yeah, these guys were awesome. All right. Yeah, that's gonna do it for me though today, guys, man. Uh, let me know what you thought about Book of Boba Fett episode seven, the season finale of season one. Let me know what you thought about the season. Uh, let me know what you think Star Wars is going next. Uh, the release date for Kenobi was just announced. I thought about adding a little bit of tail end of that in here, but uh, I'm just going to cover it at another time. But Kenobi was recently announced too, so we're going to be coming back to Tatooine real soon um, in a couple months, honestly. So, uh, But yeah, let me know what you thought of Book of Boba Fett. Let me know what you thought of the finale. Were you happy with the finale? Did you hate it? Do you wish they did more? Do you wish they did less? Uh, pop off. Let's go in the comments, man. Zoodcast is a channel where we talk, we let it rip, bro. So go ahead and let pop off about Star Wars, man, because I love Star Wars and I love popping off about Star Wars. I have been your host for this video, Adrian Grody. That's my Instagram handle right there. Uh, we got some other clips coming this week from Zoodcast, some other political stuff, some news. Um, I'm going to be doing more videos like this. I think I'm thinking about watching a Peacemaker and doing some videos about Peacemaker. So if you like the DC Universe, and I'm probably going to be doing some uh, stuff leading up to Multiverse of Madness as well. Talking about some Doctor Strange comics and some other Doctor Strange things that I really like. So, um, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. It has been Zoodcast, and this has been The Book of Boba Fett. Hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs>